Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Today's daily charge with Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. The date 20th November 2024. Our topic help your brethren. Help your brethren. I want to beseech you again to implore you get a, a soft copy or hard copy of the Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional and make sure your Bible is always around you so that when we go into these topics you will not only benefit from the discussion as we do but even after you can take your time to go through it again and read your Bible and the Lord bless you as you do so in the name of Jesus let us pray Father thank you Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for renewed hope. Thank you because as we call upon you, you answer us. Notwithstanding our little errors or faults, our weaknesses, thank you for your forgiveness, your mercy. Thank you for your love that it be exalted in Jesus' name. As we go into your word, lead us by your spirit. Teach us. Open our hearts to understand it. Make us better Christians and help us to do just according to your word. We'll not just be hearers and readers alone, but we'll be doers and thereafter be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Help your brethren. The topic of our devotional today, 20th November 2024. Memory verse is taken from Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. And it reads, Bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear the burden of one another as Christians. And as you do, the Bible says you are fulfilling the laws of Christ. So it means when you have brethren, you are doing so, not just out of your own way or out of mere compassion. You are even fulfilling the laws of Christ and you are an obedient child of God. The motivational quote reads, says don't wait till your word gets to the end of the tunnel before they see the light. Be the light where you are now. Be the light where you are now. Beloved Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16. Matthew 5 14 to 16. The verse 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. Ye, we, the children of God, we are the light of the world. And in verse 16 it says, Let your light so shine before me. So it means, as the light of the world, we must shine. And so, our motivational quote is saying, Don't get to the end of the tunnel before they see your light. Where you are now, shine the light, so that they will glorify your Father. Who is in heaven. God will be glorified when we beam the light. And may we be shining light in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, according to the prophetic word for today, that you shall go all the way and sacrifice all you can to make the world see the light of the gospel of Jesus through you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's look into our fire scripture for today. And that takes us into the book of Joshua, chapter 1. I'm going to read from verses 12 to 16. Verses 12 to 16. I will jump some verses for the sake of our time. And I want you to read the entire verse at your convenience. Verse 12. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to have the tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord God has given you rest, and has given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren, and all the mighty men of valor and help them. 
and hear him in verse 15. Until the Lord has have given your brethren rest as he has given you and they also have possessed the land which the Lord has given us them. That was the instruction he gave them. That is, yes, they are Reubenites and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh. They have been given their own land. But he said, you will not just sit down. You have to support your brethren until the Lord give them rest also and they enter into their own possessions. And said then, you know, these people, you can read verse 16. Of course, they said, we shall do all that you have spoken. Like we have read, Moses has allotted the land to the tribe of Reuben, the Gadites, um, and the half tribe of Manasseh. Now, Joshua is saying, as we read again, don't settle down yet. We know you already have your land. And your brethren are yet to enter into their land. They are going to still fight so many battles before they possess their land. So be there to support them. So that by the time they have fought those battles, they have taken their possession of the land, then all of you, you the Rubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, can return to your own land and then your brethren too will be peacefully settled in their own land. What do we learn from here? Brotherly love, brotherly affection, and support. And what is the Lord teaching us? From the beginning of scriptures to the end, that we should be a burden bearer. That's what we read in that Galatians 6 2, our memory verse. Be a burden bearer. As a Christian, you must be ready to help your fellow brethren. You must be an encourager like Barnabas. You must be able to show the love of Christ in you to other people. This is the only way to reach to the world. The world is in disarray. The world is in a situation where some are crying and they are in need of help. So you need to step out of your own convenience and your comfort zone and to reach to the dying world. There are the, 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 the trodden in this world. There are those who are struggling to make lives meet, you know, to make ends meet in your church, in your neighborhood, in your, even in your family, in your immediate environment, even in the, your place of work. You must be a body bearer. We'll take a short break. We'll come back to continue on this discourse. Stay connected. Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional, The Mountain Top Live, for the year 2024, Volume 9, available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Live Daily Devotional, Volume 9, a life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available, Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. Life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. You're welcome back to today's Daily Charge with Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. And today is November 20, 2024. Our topic, Help Your Brethren. And we started looking at our memory verse, Galatians 6.2 that tells us to bear one another's body 
and fulfill the law of Christ. A motivational quote encourages us that we should not wait until we get to the end of the world or our world before people begin to see our light. Where you are, make sure you shine right now. And that shining, what is it all about? It is helping other people. Stretch your hand of fellowship. Meet with other people's needs, especially in the household of God. Reach out to people who are in need. Help the needy. Help the groaning world. Bring joy to people's hearts. Bring smiles to their faces. Don't say until I'm I am up there. Even with the little you have, show love, brotherly love and affection. Support people. And God will be glorified. And people will rejoice at your manifestation. And God will be happy with it. We have a wonderful example here about a man called Nehemiah. He was a man who was a king, the king called Bera at that time. But he saw the need of his people. Jerusalem was with broken walls, in shambles. You can read through the entire book of Nehemiah. What a wonderful book. What a wonderful man. A man with a glorious vision. At that his position, he got the burden. And it's like, I must arise. I'm comfortable here, but let me go and help my people. Nehemiah was a builder. He rebuilt with the help of others, the walls of Jerusalem, so that Jerusalem will not be porous to the invasion of the wicked or the enemy. Nehemiah was a social reformer. He did not just stop at building the wall or the walls of Jerusalem. Yes, at the beginning of that his mission, he prayed and he fasted. That's why I said you should go and read the entire book of Nehemiah. In fact, he prayed at every point of, of his assignment. He was calling upon God for help, praying that God should put away the enemy and, the, and, the, and his workers and strengthen their hands to do the work. And thank God, a portion of that by, uh, uh, book of Nehemiah, he said the people had a mind to work. What a great thing. The way Nehemiah reached out to them and he had sought the help of the king of heaven. And the king of earth is the king whom, with whom he worked showed him favor. He gave him notes so that people would give him wood, timber, and all the things he needed. And not only that, he got those things he needed, but he needed people. So, the Lord gave him a warm heart, the love, and, 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 and the support from people. And they came, and brethren joined hands, and the world was completed. In 52 days, they were able to build the world right about Jerusalem. And the shame of Jerusalem was covered. The openness, the, 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 the uh, uh, opportunity of the enemy to invade Jerusalem was, was uh, uh, stopped. And Jerusalem was again surrounded with walls and the people were, were happy. Nehemiah did not stop there. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 5, I'm saying it again, please go and read the entire book of Nehemiah. He went further to work as a social reformer and to, to, to wipe the tears of his people. He could, even though this man was kind, he was not too comfortable as he's supposed to be, yet he stepped out of his own convenience in the palace to salvage his people, to redeem his land, and to bring glory to Jerusalem once again. In the book of Nehemiah chapter 5, I start from verse 1. I may omit verses for the sake of our time. Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 1. Say, and there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. Meaning even right inside Jerusalem, the Jews, the richer ones were, were uh, afflicted, oppressing, cheating, on the, on the, on the uh, 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 poorer ones, on the needy, which was not too good. They were taking things, I mean, the, the, the possessions away from them without paying. Read through verses 2 to 5. 
the way they were, they were, they were oppressing these people. And, and you know, they, they didn't have power against them. It happens in many nations of the world. And in verse 6, Nehemiah wrote, And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact usury every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We after our ability have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace, and found nothing to answer. Also I said, It is not good that you do that you do. Ought you not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen or, or our enemies? I move to verse um, 11. Restore, I pray you to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olivias, and their houses. And it went on and on. In verse 12, then said they, we will restore them and we will require nothing of them. So we will do as thou sayest. Imagine what Nehemiah did. The nobles, the rich people, they were cheating the, 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 the needy and the poorer ones. And Nehemiah stood as a social reform to stop this evil act. If heathens, if our enemies are cheating us and we, did, we, we rescued our people from them, should you, brother to brother, cheat one another? No. Rather than do, and take usury of these people. Help your brethren. Help them. And thank God these people listened to Jer uh, Nehemiah. And they said, all the things we took from them, we are going to restore. The end of the story, these people had a feast. They rejoiced before the Lord. And that's where the, that verse in Nehemiah 8 said, said, this is a great day. They should not weep or cry before the Lord, even when they brought out the book and all of that. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah could say that, that the joy of the Lord is the strength of people because they were not only redeemed or delivered from their enemies, they were also delivered from their brothers that wanted to cheat them. And even at that, all that their brethren took from them were restored to them. And Nehemiah made both the, the, the rich and the poor to know that we must help one another. The, the rich should not cheat or oppress the, the, the poorer one. Rather, save a soul. Bring joy to people and bring uh, 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 smiles to their faces. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we read in the scriptures, was a man that was going about doing good, doing good, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, and restoring hope to the hopeless. If Jesus was doing that, how much more we? The early church, the apostles, they were there in one unity, love, togetherness, sharing amongst them and caring for themselves. So much that you don't know those who have and those who do not. That is the spirit of brotherly love, brotherly affection, brotherly support. That is how to help our brethren. We see other examples in the Bible. The Borah, arose in the Old Testament, in the book of Judges, as a mother in Israel, not just as a judge and a prophetess. She supported Barak and they went to war. And the war, and, 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 and God gave them victory as they have spoken. In Acts chapter 9, we saw Dorcas, a woman who was so hospitable, sewing clothes for the widow. So much so that when Dorcas, Tabitha died, Peter came and prayed on her. And she received life and came back to life. And joy filled the hearts of people. When the little moment she died, they were weeping for her. You can imagine. We're not saying until that you don't need to die until people start weeping for you. No, do the good now. That's what our motivational code says. Do it now. Let your light shine. The light of Deborah, the light of Dorcas, shone right in their lifetime. And people, even when they were alive and when they left, they glorify God for them. We should emulate Jesus and do that which going, going about doing good, especially for those in the heart of brethren and even those outside. And heaven will rejoice at our manifestation. We take a break.
come back and then we'll complete this discourse. Stay connected. God bless you. Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional, The Mountain Top Live for the year 2024, Volume 9, available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Live Daily Devotional, Volume 9, a life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available, Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. Life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. You're welcome back to today's Daily Church with Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. 20th November 2024. Our topic again, help your brethren. Help your brethren. I'm sure by now, even if you have been doing it before, you'll be more encouraged to do so. And if not, you will, by now, I'm sure the Spirit of God will have struck a chord in, inside of you to say it is time to bear the burden of other people. Because as you do, no, only giving out just because you have to give out or giving out because you feel I don't need it. No! You are doing it out of love. Saving a soul. Wiping out the tears from the face of people. Redeeming lives and bringing hope to the hopeless. As you do it, you are fulfilling the law of Christ because he said we should bear the burdens of one another. In fact, the second commandment after the first great commandment in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, that you should love the Lord, Lord your God with all your heart, with all your body, your soul, spirit. See, the second one, the Bible says, it is like it. What is the second commandment? You should love your fellow brother as yourself. As yourself. So if actually you love, then you'll be able to help. You will not just help because they are your family members. You will help because... You are brethren in the Lord, children of the same Father. One Lord, one baptism, one God, one faith. You will do it in the house of God. You look around you, the brother that has no shirt, no shoes, bless him. The sister that is not wearing good cap or cap or dresses like you, bless them. Bless them in cash, bless them in kind. Bless them with your word. Encourage people. Barnabas was there to encourage Paul. And he did it so well that when other brethren were not ready to receive Paul, he was the one that was there with him. And of course, if he was not there when Saul was converted and he became Paul, I'm sure brethren would have said, no, 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 we're not sure of this man. Let him go. He did his work. He was a, an encourager. Bible called him the son of encouragement. Encourage people with your word. With your actions, help those who are in need to do some little chores to do some little things. Bring people to the place where they will bless God for your life. And not just blessing God for you. Heaven will rejoice at your manifestation because you are doing the will of God and you are making God please. You, you, you are pleasing God in every way and you are making people happy and God will be happy for you. The writer of a devotional refers to that woman popularly called Mother Teresa and how she lived her life helping people and she was so empathic that today we remember her for the good works that she has done beloved let your light shine you are the light of the world shine in your church shine in your extended family 
Shine in your neighborhood. Shine in your place of work. Shine at the marketplace. Shine wherever you are. Let them see Christ in you. And let them embrace the love of God through you. And God will be happy and delighted with you. Beloved, we can pray for the grace and the power to do it. Sometimes we want to do it. And then, maybe for a reason, you are. So I want you to pray. Say, Father, give me the grace to bear the body of Father in the name of Jesus. Pray for him so that the Lord will bless you with everything that you need to do. The grace to be a burden bearer, to, 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 to share the body with others, to bring joy to them, to make the world a better place for people to live in. Father, give me the grace to be a body of Father in the name of Jesus. Because as you are doing it, you are actually building the house of God. You are making brethren to feel loved. And then the church is becoming a warmer and a better place in the name of Jesus. I want you to specifically ask. Say, Lord, give me somebody to bless today. Somebody to show the love of Christ to in the name of Jesus. Even every day of your life. It's so much that as you go, you begin to plant the love of God, the joy of the Lord in the lives of people. And heaven is delighted at your work. You bring hope to the hopeless, help to the helpless, and God is happy with you. As you do it, may you become a delight of God. And may the heaven, even the heavens of the heaven, rejoice at your manifestation. In Jesus' mighty and perfect name. Amen. Go and be blessed and go and bless others. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I decree that today it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion will move you forward in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you this day, neither shall any plague move near your camp. Wherever you go, the favor of the Almighty shall be upon you. Your life shall be plugged into the socket of divine favor, divine restoration, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the evil present in this day, I bind them and I cast them out. You shall not be part of the evil that is spreading around in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make you head and never detail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. You are going in, your coming out shall be blessings. The hand of God shall be mighty upon you. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have a wonderful day, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.